Welcome to our third video in our series on genetics. In this part, we're going to investigate sex-linked traits. In 1910, Thomas Hunt Morgan was studying genetics using Drosophila melangaster. Well, what's that? The common fruit fly. And the reason why we use fruit flies for, to do genetic research is that they reproduce quickly and in large numbers, they only have four pairs of chromosomes to track, and they're inexpensive and easy to work with. Now one of the characteristics that's easy to see in fruit flies is the eye color. Most fruit flies have this very distinctive red eye, it's called wild type, but we're just going to call it red. But one day Morgan happened across a white-eyed fruit fly, which suggested a white eye allele. In this mutant version uh, of male, oh, he found a white-eyed male fruit fly. And so logically he wanted to cross these two and see what would happen. And when you do cross these two parent fruit flies, all of your F1 generation have red eyes, which suggests that the red eye allele is dominant to the white eye allele and would give us these genotypes. So far so good, nothing unusual here. But now let's take two of our F1 flies and cross them. So we'll move these guys up to make room and we have these heterozygote or hybrid fruit flies uh, in our F1 generation and we bring in another and we make this cross. Now. I want you to stop the video and give me what you think the results are going to be. What do you hypothesize in the F2 generation? Well, hopefully you learned in our past videos that we could easily set up a Punnett square, and we should see a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio where we have red eyes, red eyes, red eyes, to one white-eyed. So let's see what Morgan found. Well, it turns out that he got a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. At this point, you should be saying, well, Mr. Savage, why are we talking about this? We knew that was going to happen. Well, let's look at these F1 flies a little bit closer. It turns out something very interesting is going on here. When you had 3 to 1 red eyes to white eyes, that's interesting. But it's more interesting that not a single of the white-eyed flies was female. And exactly half of the male flies had white eyes. Really? gender shouldn't, shouldn't matter. We should have a 3 to 1 ratio regardless of they're male to female, but, but it wasn't like that. So then the question is, could white eyes only happen in males? Well, we have to do another round of crosses to find out. So let's make an F3. So we'll take this white-eyed male and we'll cross it with these uh, red-eyed females from this F2 generation. So first let's pull one of these over and cross a white-eyed F2 male with a red-eyed F2 female. And sometimes when we do this, we got 100% red eyes. Again, we can't figure out too much from that. But interesting, when we take this white-eyed male and cross it with this other F2, sometimes when we make this cross, the offspring were 50-50, red eyes to white eyes. Furthermore, we had half of the males exactly white and red and half of the females. So white eyes could show up in female fruit flies. So what's going on here? Is this normal Mendelian genetics? It seems in this case that gender matters. So what determines gender? Now I'm going to come back to Morgan's experiment in just a moment. But we need to kind of take a detour for a while and then see if we can get back there. So just some information. In humans, we have 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs fruit flies have eight and four pairs. We have 22 of these chromosomes that we call autosomal. They're homologous. They're the same no matter you're, you're male or female. You get two of every of these uh, first 22 pairs. But the last pair is a pair of chromosomes that we call the sex chromosomes. Let's make a little more sense of that. This is a picture showing the chromosome. We call this a karyotype. And we can see on here the first 22 pair, one through 22, are our autosomal chromosomes. And I covered up the last pair here. The last pair are our sex chromosomes. I want to think about this a little closer. So let's look, let's pick one of these out. Let's look at chromosome pair number two. We have two chromosome number twos. And let's look at that a little closer. And we see that these two chromosomes are homologous. You received one from your mother and one from your father. And what that means is, if we look at this chromosome, if there's an A gene at this locus, at this location, then at the corresponding locus or location on its homolog, on its pair, there has to be an A gene. If there's a B gene here, there has to be a B gene there. But notice they don't have to be the same version of B, because you got this chromosome from one parent 
and this chromosome from the other parent, they're homologous, they're alike, but not identical. So our first 22 pairs are all like that. But this last pair chromosome comes in two forms, a Y and an X. And it's these chromosomes that determine gender. So we have the X version of the chromosome and the Y version of the chromosome. And if you inherit two of the X genes, or X chromosomes, you're female. If you inherit an X with a Y, you're male. So that every time we have offspring in humans, and the same in fruit flies, we have to cross a female with a male because you know, that's just biology. And if you need to understand that, then we need to do some remedial work. But I have a female cross with a male, and we could set it up instead of with genes, but with chromosomes, and to see how genders determine. So I'll put one parent along here, the mom, and the dad across the top. Whoops, did not mean to move those. And we can see, or you can fill in and see what happens, but hopefully you would get this. We have 50-50 chance of getting male offspring versus female offspring. So these are the females and these are the males. Well, how does that relate to what Morgan was doing? Well, we need to look at these two chromosome pairs a little closer. So when we look at the two X chromosomes, we should be able to see that they're homologous. We have two of every gene because we have two of these chromosomes. And while the male has an X chromosome with genes A, B, C, D, and E, on the Y chromosome there are unrelated genes. This pair is a non-homologous pair. Now, think about what that means. First thing, let's define sex-linked genes. Genes that reside on the X chromosome are said to be sex-linked. Sometimes you'll see it written as X-linked, which kind of makes a little bit more sense. And so if you're a female, you're going to receive two copies of every one of these genes, two A's, two B's, two C's, two D's, and E's, and so forth. But if you're a male, you're only going to receive one copy of these genes. There's no corresponding homologous chromosome, so there's no corresponding homologous genes. And this makes it much easier to express a recessive sex link trait in males rather than females. For example, for a female to express this recessive E gene, she'd have to um, inherit two copies of that gene. But a male could express that recessive trait with only one copy of the gene. With this understanding, let's reevaluate Morgan's crosses. Here are his original parents. But if this is a sex linked trait, then gender matters. And we know if this is a male, he can't be carrying two of these white eyed genes because he doesn't have two X chromosomes. So we can't have that. Now, one of the things we do in sex linked crosses is that we reevaluate our key. So instead of using this notation, let's change it. Where do these genes reside? These eye color genes are on the X chromosome. So we're going to choose the same letters, big R and little r, because red is dominant. But we're going to put those letters on an X chromosome. So we have to rewrite this genotype. Instead of big R, big R, this female would have the genotype that looks like this, big X, or X, big R, X, big R. And the male would have what genotype? Pause the video and write down what you think the male has. Now this is a place where some students make a mistake. The male has this genotype. He has an X with a white eye uh, gene and a Y chromosome with nothing. Remember, there's no corresponding genes on the Y chromosome, so the male only gets one eye color gene. In this case, a white eye gene. That's why he has white eyes. And remember, when we looked at the offspring, all the F1s, 100% of the time, had red eyes. Using a Punnett square, see if you can see, make, um, kind of write why that would happen. Uh, pause the video and do this cross. Now, I hope you did pause the video, but if you didn't, we're going to go on anyway. So I'm going to take this parent and put her along this side, separating those genes, the principle of segregation, and we'll put the dad across the top. Now it should be really easy to fill in our boxes. We can see that we have a red-eyed female, a red-eyed female, red-eyed male, red-eyed male. So it's very obvious that 100% of our F1s would be red eyes. Now let's move on to our F2 generation. We crossed two of our F1 flies, a female with a male, of course. So we'll put those up there. So we have a heterozygous female right here. That's why all of our females look that way. And a red-eyed male right there. And we'll see that when we make the cross, we get three to one ratio of white eyes to red eyes. Build your cross here and see why that happens. Go ahead, pause the video, and write it out. 
doesn't matter which side you put each parent, but I'll put the female on this side. There's my heterozygous female. And I'll put my male across the top. He has red eyes. And then we'll fill in our Punnett square. Hopefully you got the same thing I got. And it becomes very obvious why we have a 3 to 1 ratio. Red eyes, red eyes, red eyes, white eyes. It also becomes obvious why none of the white eyes have, are females. All the females have red eyes. And why exactly half of the males have white eyes and half have red eyes. So there you go, a very famous experiment by Thomas Hunt Morgan. And let's think about why it's so important. While Gregor Mendel told us that traits are determined by distinct factors, genes, Morgan tells us that these genes are carried on chromosomes. Now, I'm going to challenge you here. Let me give you an another example to work. Hemophilia is a blood clotting disorder that's caused by a sex-linked recessive trait. I want you to set up and give the results of a cross between a carrier female and a normal male. Pause the video, get out a piece of paper, and solve this problem. So, what's the trait? The trait's blood clotting factor. And it says that hemophilia is recessive, so normal's dominant, hemophilia is recessive, so we can give normal a big N and hemophilia a little N. But it's a sex link trait, so these genes are on an X chromosome. We have to cross a female with a male, and now we have to figure out what they are. The female is a carrier. If you're a carrier for a trait, you have the gene, but you don't express it. So she's heterozygous. And the male's normal, so he has a big N. So build your Punnett square. We we'll put the mom on one side, the dad across the top, and hopefully you've got this. So that does it for sex-linked traits. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to look at some human um, genetic disorders. I'm also going to look at a concept called non-disjunction that's very important. So come back for that video, and if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below the video, and I hope you learned something.